Ryan Rowe. Coach Hatchek is living, and I saw it. Ryan Rowe was held. That wide receiver that Rowe was covering, he switched to a blocker, and he grabbed Ryan Rowe's jersey and held him. And Coach Hatchek, if we can get a picture of him, is living on the sideline on that ref. Can't quite see him, but Hatchek was just, just screaming at this one ref. Ryan Rowe was held out of that play and not able to make that tackle. And it cost them a first down. It got, it got Northwestern to first down. Sometimes those are the breaks, though. Yeah, that was a nice play, really, by Northwestern. Nice fake. He, I think faked a lot of the linemen out on that play. Oh, football! Turn around and BB football! That's the way to go. Matt Sauer got in there and crushed the quarterback. It's exactly what BB needs. And that's why Matt Sauer is predicted to be an all-conference tight end or defensive end this year. I was scared we weren't going to quite replay. grab that ball. There you see Matt Sauer, I'm not sure who got the ball, can't really tell by that angle. Now let's get it going, we got the ball at the, at their 49 yard line. DV's got us, turn it up now. The offense has got to get going here. I think we're gonna see a couple more passes. We're going for the deep one. Matt Moore, oh, just couldn't get it. Just passes out, reach arms, that's all right. I think Coach I think, thinks that's okay. We got that defense loosened up again. And what happens is those strong safeties now will be scared that you know, they're going to go for that big pass and hopefully they'll play farther back. And hopefully that'll allow our running game to, to get reestablished again. With basically the number two receiver hurt right now, Kyle Pellets out with a sprained ankle. It's Troy Zalas Salazar who will be in. And there's going to Craig Williams who gets the quick one for about a, a gain of six Maybe yards right six there. Yards. This is where we need our offensive line really to kick in. They need to pop those defensive guys, their defensive linemen back, open some holes for the running game, and also give uh, Kyle or give uh, Jeremy some time to throw the ball. We got a big play right now. It's third down and five. Third down and five as Salzar goes back in. Tony Lovejoy coming out. This might be one of those th plays they call a play of the game right here because it's, it's going to. Three wide receivers. Chad Hissler just set in the backfield. I think Northwestern's coming They're with bringing the, the house. And it's to Ryan Grubb, but just oh, short, be short. first down. Coach Hatchek's going to have a big decision to make here. We got probably about fourth and two, fourth and one. Are you going to go for it? Maybe the and get that that's keep this one drive those, alive, or are you going to punt it and be on the safe side? I think we're going to yeah, go for it. That's one of those plays, though, really. Ryan Grubb should have probably gotten beyond the now first the, down mark. Now the team, now the sideline, the team is just trying to get that crowd into it. Here we go. This could be the one, like you said, one of the plays of the game right here. The cheerleaders are getting pumped. The fans Ryan are Grubb the was team. pumped up. Fourth down and one. Northwestern burning the house. I think we're going to bring it right up the middle. Matt Pelusi. It's going to be close. Short. It's going to be close. He dove right there at the last second. It depends where this mark of the ball is. I bet we're going to get a measurement on this one. As they're bringing the chains out. But we got the crowd on their feet, though. Everybody's standing up wondering if it's going to be a first down or not. I think, we're, I think you're right, Rhea. I think, Eric, I think you're right. We're going to be a little bit short. Let's see if we can get a good angle there. We got a good angle. At, oh. And we are. If they can get stretched out here. We made it. We made it. By the nose of the football. That's exactly. First down, Buena Vista. That's exactly what we needed. <laughs> we we're talking about breaks earlier in the game. Now here's another break for, here's a break for BB. Big break there. Matt Pelusi, luckily Matt, Matt's about an inch taller than he, then, yeah. then, you know. If then he was another, an inch shorter, like, we would have had Tony Lovejoy <laughs> running that ball. Now maybe we can keep rolling. So now the handoff to Hissler, who goes right up the middle. Boy, Strong Hissler, run. when he hits that line, he runs, he's hitting that full speed. No matter what, when Chad comes to the line, he's going to at least gain a couple yards just by momentum falling forward. He gets about two yards on that run. So now 10-44, 14-21, Northwestern lead. The coaches are doing an excellent job of mixing up the plays. It's not run, run, run. It's not pass, pass, pass. They're mixing it up, keeping Northwestern off their feet. Northwestern sure likes to blitz though on that third down. And yeah, they do. Five play, boy. They, they bring the house. There's a nice camera angle of the action going on on the field. I think they're... Jeremy Blyle once again, and he's covered again. Craig Williams catches it. They'll give him a little forward progress, I'm thinking. 
Northwestern just likes to come. They're coming with eight, nine guys, and we only got seven, eight offensive linemen. There's going to be a mismatch there somewhere. Nice job of the offensive line to, to pick them up as well as they did. They didn't give they didn't give uh, Craig as much uh, forward progress as I thought they would probably give him. Another big third down play. Third and four now. I think in this situation, though, with this much time left in the game, with 9.52, you're thinking four downs. You're yep. not thinking three anymore and a punt. You're thinking BB's got four downs because there no, there's no tomorrow after this game. So Matt Pelusi, lone guy in the backfield, two tight ends. Nice coverage this time. Offensive line doing excellent. Just can't get enough time. Might have lost a, we're probably going to be close to a fourth and eight or a fourth and nine. It's fourth down fourth and seven. seven. This is a so tough call. This has another decision making. It looks like they're going for it as Hissler brings the play to Jeremy Blyle. Like we're talking, this is four down territory anymore. And I'm thinking we're going to have to see a pass because getting seven yards on the ground is tough unless they go with the Chad Hissler draw play. As here it goes. Let's get the fans back into it, says the cheerleaders and the team. Fourth and seven, big play right here. The offensive line's got to stop him. Northwestern does not come with a blitz. They're coming with 25. Jeremy's able to avoid him. Fumble. Oh, fumble. Northwestern's no fumble. Northwestern falls on it. Number 75, Kevin Vanderlinden falls on the ball. Big break for Northwestern there. Bad Bad break for uh, Buena Bad Vista. Break for I think Jeremy was trying so hard to get something made. He thought he was going to get away from that guy that kept that ball out there instead of tucking it in. And 25 just came on a safety blitz again, Brent, and, uh, and no, no one, one, no picked, one picked him up. Him up. And that's Jeremy is all by himself out there. I think he did an excellent – I mean, that shows how much they want to win this game bad. I mean, he was trying to get away from that guy as best as he could, and he almost got away. Now our defense has got to pick up and get another turnover. They did it. They've done it twice now. we got to do it again. Pass going right into Giesel. That surprises. This really surprised me that Northwestern decided to go with the pass. One, it stops the clock, and two, there, there's no need for them really to do this. They should, they can run it and and run out the clock. You're exactly right, Brent. But we'll but see what they're thinking. That's trying to get another score. That's in BB's favor, though. As Westmar uh, squeaked by in their first victory against uh, Tokyo Westmar, 7-0. They won that game 7 to nothing. They're playing another pretty close game. Well, that couldn't have been a very exciting game. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the center. Oh, fumble and a that's fumble. That's the center didn't snap it when the quarterback wanted it. Quarterback started pulling out. We have Jeff Delirman is back in the football game at quarterback. Uh, Jer uh, Jeremy DeBee is back out. He was out of the game, and number 11 is back in as quarterback. So maybe that was a possibility for that. For that. For that fumble on the snap, when you switch quarterbacks and you keep the same center, centers get used to that quarterback with their hands in a certain spot, and so sometimes it causes a a bad snap. So now Northwestern five yard penalty there. They're second and fifteen. BV has got to hold him right here. Ref, stop the clock. There's something not quite right. Official timeout. It looks like here. He pointed at the clock. I'm not sure if the clock wasn't running or. There might be something wrong with the clock. Or maybe there's. Well, a it says Buena Vista's football. Number one thing's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A lot of times down on the field, the, the line judge and the, and the head umpire keep the time and the score and the downs too, so. Sometimes they get on the, not on quite on the same page with the, the score. Now we got 83 minutes and 40 <laughs> seconds left, so. so the clock's got a little screwy right now. Uh, they're putting some time back on the clock. They must have ran through that through that play. So now 8:34 left in the game. That's back in BB's favor. The more time, the better. Running a 4-4 defensive set here. Drop back to handoff. Big hole again for Mossman. Mossin, excuse me. Wow, really impressive. Well over 100 yards for the game right Eric now. Eric Moore made the, the really a, a touchdown saving tackle there by hanging on to his, his shoestring.
We got a third down and five. Even after that big run, they still didn't get a first down, which is good for us. So now third down. Northwestern under center. They're back to pass it. Incomplete. We got fourth down. That's always nice to see that big four on the on the scoreboard. So fourth down, and it looks like they're North looks like they're bringing their punting crew. Northwestern's quarterback Jeff Delerman, who is their second string quarterback, just does not look comfortable back in that pocket making a pass. He, he's kind of trying to aim the ball, and it, which is to BV's advantage. So now punt on to punts Northwestern. Craig Williams it looks back like to receive the punt. It looks like BB's sending everybody. Fake it. And they stopped him. They stopped him. 94 there. Jason. Dan Barkema. Look at that. They faked it. Dan Barkema in there. Who else is right there? Nick Grant, it looked like, maybe got in on that play. Great big. Big defensive stand there by the special teams unit. Big defensive boost, and that gives BV the ball at the 40 at uh, Northwestern's own 46. Great fuel position, Great. 747 left. Let's see what BV can do. Hand off to Hissler. Hissler up the middle. Short game, if any at all. I think this is a situation where BB's going to have to pass. I think we're going to see a, a passing play here. They they need to get some yards. Uh, I hate to say it, but with seven minutes left, the time, we're getting lower. It's not, there's yep. not as much time left in the game as there, as there used to be. Exactly right, Brent. So they're going out with Hissler in, in the right receiver slot. Hand off to Pelusi. Pelusi has some field, but then he runs into a wall of Northwestern players. Ran into three Northwestern players. Just put, Pelusi took all three of them on. And, I'd say he kind of lost that battle. As Kyle Pellet's day is now complete as he takes the shoulder pads off. And I'm sure that's got to be frustrating for him. Yeah, Pellet, Pellet's a, he's a tough, tough competitor and a really good receiver for BV. Jeremy looking. Blyle, he's, he's got, got some running room. room. And oh. he gets the first down. Jeremy Blyle takes that one by himself. Excellent, excellent. Almost lost the football. Almost <laughs> got it stripped for him. That's a big play for BV. That breathes a little life into the, into the crowd. As there you go, you see him scrambling into the pocket and right up to get the first down. Big play by Jeremy Blyle. That's a nice job of taking upon his shoulders to get that first yep. down. No one is open. That's, that's the sign of a good quarterback when you can see that opening up and, uh, and that's scary takes to take the grass. Hissler, he's got a little daylight. He gets about four or five yards on that play. Because I'm sure in that last play, it's not Jeremy's favorite play to go around running around. No. I'm sure he'd, he'd rather throw the ball to some guy and let them run instead of him running himself, but did a nice job. Now we see Benji Kiesel running into play. I think this is the first time I've seen him on. This might be his first action. I don't know if uh, Coach Hatchex has got a trick up his sleeve. He said that in his playbook. Yep. Playbook, he's got a couple tricks. There's so. always a gimmick play. Coach Hatchex says there's Benji Kiesel to our near side. Ryan Grubb and uh, Bremer in the stand-up positions. They're passing They're it. Going to They're going Grubb to Ryan Grubb. He breaks one tackle, breaks another, and I think he may have the first down. Ryan Grubb, nice running by Ryan Grubb after just the catch. Just ran over that Northwestern. Lucan Olsen just ran over like he wasn't even there. So first down, we're at the 22-yard line now. BV on a little uh, jaunt here towards the end zone. Let's hope they can keep it up. Let's keep this momentum going. As Matt Plusi, the lone running back, they have double t set tight ends. Plusi run into one player. Took a hard hit but kept going. Probably a gain of gain of none. We got the Maybe clock. They're saying, they're saying a gain of one. Gain of on one. We got the clock still ticking. We're down at 5.08. So BB has a little time to work with here. 
It brings up an interesting point, though, when the time comes, if they do score a touchdown, do you go for one or do you go for two? Do you want the tie or exactly the win? right, Brent. We'll wait to see that happen. <laughs> uh, let's hope. Let's just <laughs> let, let the score first. That's Hissler open. And then he stopped right away. Chad Hissler dragged the guy that jumped on top of his back for a good yard until another Northwestern player came up and hit him. So we'll have third down now and about six, it looks like. Seven, I guess. I wouldn't want to be the offensive corner right now making these decisions. <laughs> I just, too much pressure to decide what play to pick. So you see the score 21-14. Northwestern with the lead. It is third and nine, but we have to remember we got two more downs, basically. Chad Hissler out wide, so is Benji Casel. And Troy Zalasar Northwestern Zalazar coming the with one. the Brits. This time they picked it up. Not sure. That was to Salazar, but he didn't look up at all. He was still running across the field. We did an excellent job, though, that time of picking up the blitz. That time Matt Pelusi picked up number, picked up the Northwestern uh, safety who was on the blitz. Fourth down and nine. It's fourth and nine now. Let's see what Buena Vista does here as Matt Moore comes back into the game. The fans are getting back on their feet. Here it is, another big play another for Buena big Vista. Play. It seems like Let's there's been a lot of big plays here. this game. Yeah, there has Hissler and Moore, the main receivers. Benji Casel spread out wide. Let's hope that offensive line can They're staying in the block. They're going to hiss. Oh, just can't get it to the end zone. And now the defense will take over. Northwestern gets the ball on downs. Well, now it rests in the hands of our defense. There's four minutes left in the game, and they have to create either a turnover or cause Northwestern to go three and out. So now here we go. We said, Brent, at the beginning of the game, the key is defense, and uh, we're back I guess to it's, it. it's living to the truth right here. It has been all defense for Buena Vista so far this second half. It's really kept him in here. A little broken play, option out. Nick Grant gets an ankle, and then he's finally stopped. Is Mawson. Number 13, Jeremy DeBay is back in the game, the quarterback for Northwestern, their starting quarterback. So that's a loss of a yard. The defense once again is stepping up. They've stepped up to the challenge the whole game. Oh, oh. fumble! Jason Fick had it. BB football. Brian Schmidt recovers. Excellent, excellent. That's what happened with that auction. That's exactly right. John Ward out there congratulating his boys. There's the replay. That's right there. It's pretty funny. Jason Fick caused that fumble, then he rolled right over the ball. But Brian Schmidt, thank goodness for BV, Brian Schmidt was right there to recover it. So now BV at their own, at uh, excuse me, Northwestern's 18-yard line. They have life once again with 3:25 left in this game. Huge break. The defense responded. We talked about defense earlier, and they responded once again. So now we'll see referees call timeout Northwestern. I think it I think that's a good idea by that Northwestern coach. His players might be a little shaken about just what happened. But once again, we had to talk about BB's defense. They caused something to happen. Every time Northwestern runs that option, when you run that pitch, you know, there's a lot of things that could happen. A bad pitch, and in that example, the running back was not even looking for the pitch when it came, so. That's exactly right, Brent. And uh, thank goodness for BV, the, we're on home turf, and the ground uh, let the ball bounce our way. But you're exactly right with that option. It's, it's, it is a very hard offense to, de to uh, defense against. But when uh, things like that, you know, I mean, just little miscues, just the ball not coming at you just right can cause fumbles. And, uh, and that was a costly one from North, for Northwestern as now BV has a chance to get into pay dirt. Well, teams live and die by the option. And this time they, they, they got caught. Option works very well. When you're working right and everybody's communicating, but there's three guys that got to know what everybody else is thinking. And that time the running back just was not ready for the ball yep. yet. As you saw, a nice shot of the lake. It's been a beautiful day here at BB. Let's hope uh, 
Some more sun is shining down on the Beavers the right here. Is the crowd's on the feet. It's first and 10, 18 yard line setting it up as Jeremy Bly will go under center. Chad Draw play to Hissler, nothing doing. Northwestern read that all the way. We had a little break in the offensive, yep. offensive blocking. Fumble oh, they're no. saying, and this Northwestern's ball. I never saw the fumble. I didn't see the fumble. I saw the Northwestern player with the ball. And Northwestern's ball. So a big break for Northwestern right there. Hopefully we can have a replay of that. Here we go. Right there, yep, it did, he fumbled it. Dropped out of his hands. So now once again, this defense has got to come up with a play. Oh, and another fumble. fumble! Jason Fick on the ball! Oh my god. Jason Fick is on the ball. How many lives can you have? <laughs> How many lives can you have? This is unbelievable. I think I've decided just in my mind right now, Brent, uh, BB should change their mascot. As we see the replay, there is Jason Fick. He's always on the ball. Northwestern switched quarterbacks again. This is like their consecutive fourth but, uh, quarterback change. It I figured something out. BV should change their mascot, not to a beaver anymore, but to a, like a wildcat or cat, because uh, we have like nine lives or we something here. We have nine here. lives. I don't know how many more times. We have two, three <laughs> yards to punch this ball in. I think we can do it. So now Chad Hissler was in the huddle. Now he's coming back out. If I was, I would give it to either Matt Palooster or Tony Lovejoy and let them pound it right up the gut. They're going with two wide receivers. Two oh! Wide receivers. That's okay, that's okay. We got a little anxious there. We had our offensive line jumped. So we're gonna get a five yard penalty for that. It's gonna push us down back to about the eight yard line. Movement on the line. Don't like to see that though, Brent. When you have great field position at the two yard line, that's a really uh, kind of dumb mental mistake you shouldn't really make. Sometimes you get that. It's a young offensive line. We are talking yep. about that earlier, and they were excited, and they, they really wanted to do something good for the team, and which they've done an excellent job of blocking all day. They just really wanted to, to hit the blocks. So now Matt Pelusi, lone running back. He pounds the ball, and he gets it to about the four-yard line. We got five the, yard line. We got the Excuse clock me. still running. It's 2.55 left in the game. So Coach Hatchek is going to have to make sure he keeps that clock in mind, though, too. We have an update before we get to the touch or uh, to the play here. Iowa's up 75. <laughs> oh, 25, excuse me. Oh, Pelosi ran way back. We're going to have a third down and about nine to go. I think we're going to have to see a pass play here, but we remember we have two downs. We have a third and fourth down to get this in. We got the crowd still on their feet. Let's not lose faith now. I think we're, we've had nine lives so far. We're not going to stop now. So Jeremy Blyle, Pelusi again, the lone setback. Ride receivers to the left side of this line of scrimmage. Pelusi, oh, Blyle back to pass. Trouble. Yeah, As we'll say, the Iowa score 25-0 at halftime. A 47-yard field goal was kicked to end that half. So, for all you Iowa fans, hope your Beaver fans switched over to us because we need a, we need all the fans we can get right now. We need Jeremy, them all behind us. Jeremy Blyle took a huge hit from the Northwestern player, but the Northwestern player <laughs> ended up hurt. So this is maybe an actual a break for the BV team. They didn't have to call a timeout, and they get to talk it over a little bit. Let's set up the situation. It's, it's fourth and six. Fourth and six, that's right. Brent Ball on the six yard line. It's 21 to 14, under two minutes to go in the game. This is what football's all about. Yeah, but yeah it is, Brent. We got a timeout from Northwestern, which is, I think, a wise call by Northwestern. They want to make sure they got the right people and the right defense. This gives BV a chance to talk it over. I think this, I don't know if it's a good time. This might be one of those good times for one of those trick plays. You, you never know when you're going to pull one of those out, but. I just want you to remember all, Monday night, debut of the 
debut of the Joe Hadichek Show. We'll be talking about this game, and uh, we'll, we can get the coach's insights then and uh, his feelings of the game and maybe what went right, what went wrong. And uh, I'll be hosting that, the highlights of the game, and spotlights of people behind the scenes will all be shown on the show. So I hope you all tune in Monday at 7 and Wednesday the 18th at 9 and then Friday at 8. Hopefully you guys can talk about a BV win. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. It makes, for those, makes those shows a lot more fun to, to, to do when the BV won the game. Everybody's on their feet, cheerleaders trying to get a better view, getting up on the benches. And I'm sure Coach Hatchek would Chad like nothing, Hissler in the game now. Would like nothing more to start off with a, with a one in the victory column. Big, huge play. Everybody in the stands are on their feet. Fourth and six, ball in the six yard line. 155 to go. <sighs> oh, Pat. Incomplete to Craig Williams on that pass. It was a timing route. Yep. Blyle threw it without even, without really even knowing Amick, uh, or uh, <laughs> without even knowing the wide receiver had turned yet, and he threw the ball, and it was a total timing route. The Northwestern guy seemed to be there kind of in the way, yep. but no call. So now Northwestern gets the ball first down and 10 and their own six-yard line. All you got to say is let's hope this defense <laughs> steps can we up do it one more again. time. 151 remaining in the game. I think the defense is going to be coming full bore. I'm thinking Northwestern is just going to want to run some draws and forget this option stuff they've been doing. Yeah, it's right there. Right but there. Nick Grant wants, has nothing to do with it. Coach Hatchek will probably call a timeout right away, I'm, I'm assuming. There he goes, timeout. Timeout, does Buena Vista call? I think we're down to one timeout. We burned up a timeout earlier. Today's broadcast, I have to tell you, is copyrighted by Innovation Video and Buena Vista University. And any rebroadcast of this telecast without the express written cons con uh, consent of Buena Vista University, Innovation Video is strictly prohibited. I've been talking way too long, I think. Brent, I'm getting all tongue twisted Boy, here. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of words there to say. We got. As you hear the band Buena Vista taking a timeout. We got everything that football is about. We got the ball in the yep. seven yard line of Northwestern. We want the ball back. I'm sure Coach Ward is telling those guys, you know, be smart, but also you're gonna have to be very aggressive and make sure that we can cause something to happen. We've caused two turnovers in the last two series, so let's see if we can do it again. And there's still a minute 42, so there's still a lot of time left. And if they can stop them on these three plays, they'll be punting deep, deep in their own end zone and you never know what can happen then. And I would be surprised if Northwestern would pass it. It would really, it might be something though that they look for. I'm sure BB is expecting run all the way. That would really. So now once again, Northwestern under center, second and nine, quick handoff, then to 22, Mawson. And he is stopped short of the first down. So it'll be about third and uh, I would say about seven. We're going to call another time out. I'm sure that's what Coach Ward was talking about. You know, they, everybody's really antsy wants to cause something to happen, and they bit right away on the first fake. They bit right away on the first fake, and that allowed uh, that second running back to, to gain a good 10-yard chunk there, or at least a five-yard chunk. Coach Ward going out, talking to Nick Grant, telling the, one of the tri-captains what to do out there. Probably tell them, you know, I mean, they want to cause something to happen, but they just can't bite on that first because I'm sure Northwestern was expecting that and went with that fake. So now, let's set it up once again. 132 remaining in the game. It's third down and five. Northwestern has the ball in there at their own 11 yard line. Buena Vista had a chance to score. They had the two, at a two yard line fumble recovery, but just couldn't punch it in as they ended up losing some yards and were at the six yard line. That's where penalties kind of come in and were costly. They, got, yep. they had that five-yard penalty, and it seemed to take away a little bit of that momentum, but you can't look at that now. Northwestern hands Same off play. to Mawson. No Stopped first down. Short. Stopped him short of that first down. So Same now it'll be about play. four, fourth and three. 
Now this is an, a really a tough decision for Northwestern, I'd have to think. I would think that they have to punt it away. They're way too deep in their own territory to, to even try. To even try. But let's say hey, they faked it once. You never know. That's right. They did fake it that one time with no success. Let's see if BB can get in there and cause some havoc with this play. There's a lot of things. It's a long snap back to the to the punter. They're sure the Northwestern is sure spending a lot of time in the huddle. This is kind of surprising. I bet they might get a delay a game. Yep, they did. Yep, they delayed a that's game. That's exactly what they called. They got a five-yard five penalty, five penalty there. In that. I don't. No, I can't see them faking it when they're this far down here. I, boy, I don't know what you do. I, you, I can't see you faking it. But that punter is going to be standing. I don't think he has enough room. He'll be standing way back in the end zone. I don't Time know. Now, but Northwestern. I'm not sure. I can see where Northwestern. I can't. I'm not sure. I can see why Northwestern wanted the clock to run down and get delay a game just so you know the clock went lower, but. I think it hurt him, if nothing else. So now we'll be taking a break, and we're going to come right back here for more of this action as it's 14:21 Northwestern lead. Stay tuned to Innovation Video. Which child deserves to be read to? This one? Or is it this one? Which child will learn to use a toothbrush? Who will have a chance to sing? The choice is yours. Volunteer for Head Start. With your help, more low-income preschool children can get what other children already have. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to Storm Lake on Innovation Video. You're watching Beaver Football as uh, Northwest Red Raiders are ready to punt it off. And they'll be the punter will be, like you said, Brent, standing in his own end zone. I'd have to say deep in his own end zone, at least halfway. He might be taking a shorter, a shorter drop, too. So Craig Williams back deep to receive. We should get pretty fair field, field uh, position with only 43 seconds remaining in the game. As oh, he goes, he's gonna oh, they're going the for the safety. Oh, Matt and Sauer. So Sauer, huge just, <laughs> Sauer just knocks him down. So they take the safety, make it 16-21. Now, now they get the choice of drop kicking it or kicking it off. Punting it or kicking it off. And most times, most uh, schools will go with the punt. Yep. It seems to be a higher percentage. And Northwestern probably made the right decision there. They wasted some more time. It got BV two more points. But if BV were to put in the end zone, that would be all she wrote. This, this has to be something I'm not sure if, if they've gone over in practice. This is not something you, you go over a lot of times in practice with a, with a guy punting instead of, yeah, they're going to go with the punt instead of punting instead of kicking it. So I'm sure Hashek is trying to give them you know, a couple words of advice there and make sure they keep Hopefully their Hopefully they on. can build a wall up here and uh, let Brennan or uh, try and make a good run at this. They should have to line up a little bit closer because with this punt, it's not going to go it's not going to go as far. No, he is nope, kicking it off. he's going to kick it. So he'll kick it off at the 20-yard line, though, so they have to sit back farther. So we should be able to get the ball out around the 35, 40-yard line, I would guess. That was it. They had their punter over kind of practicing punting. I went down here if they went with a squib kick. That usually causes some problems. With the, when you kick it on the ground, it has some funny bounces sometimes, and sometimes weird things can happen. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if he kicks it on the ground. Nope. And he goes through the air to Brennan. Brennan getting a good run at it. Getting some good blocks. He's got some wheels. 50-yard line. We have 33 seconds, folks, to do something here. I believe we have one more timeout, which is going to be a, a huge factor in this. The one good thing about – I'm sure we're going to pass the ball. One good thing about that is it stops the clock. Even if, if it's an incomplete pass, it will stop the clock. So that's, that's on our side. The completion percentage for Blyle hasn't been that great today, but hey, what a time to let those things, those completions happen right now. 33 seconds left, first and 10 ball on the Northwestern 49-yard line. And we need a touchdown. A field goal will not do us any good. We have three wide receivers. Interception. That's all she wrote. That's it. That's 48. Intercepted it, the pass attempt to Ryan Grubb, number 23. 
good coverage by 48 there for Northwestern. He stepped right in front of Grubb there and, and, and took the ball away from him. It, yeah, that was Kurt Van Hill. I don't think Grubb. Who I believe is uh, Kurt Van Hill's cousins to uh, BV's own Sean Vanderluck. And uh, our little buddy over here, Jason Page's roommate. So, uh, but yeah, Kurt Van Hill, the linebacker there, Brent, he had some real good position on that, that pass. I don't even think Grubb saw him coming. I think we're going to see it from Northwestern is just a kneel just down. Just a down and. I think BB has clock. one more timeout. I don't, don't know if they're going to use it or not. Maybe they'll just let this one go. As Northwestern folks, 15 seconds left, they'll run the clock down. Teams will shake some hands. Northwestern was able to squeak one out here, 21 to 16. Uh, disappointing opening, uh, opening season loss for Buena Vista. I think it's kind of a heartbreaker because we were in this, we were in this tough and we were, we end up losing 21 to 16. BB fought all the way. We ended up at halftime. It was 14, 14. Yep. Came out second half. I'm sure fired up and, and ready to to win and. Uh, Northwestern put up a score, 21-14 early, and we never quite fought back from there. Yeah, the defense of a few times just couldn't get going. It seemed like Brent, and uh, that kind of that, that hurt us. I think that, you know they got down the red zone. They had a little red zone trouble. Red zone, you know, when you're inside your 20 or not, or 20 yeah, they could or, not, or closer. You're correct, Rio. When they got inside the 20-yard line, they could not get that ball pushed in. They also did a nice. They got a couple breaks. Uh, they, they they caused their defense caused a couple turnovers. I think a couple of our bright spots, our defense really showed up. They did an excellent yeah, job. Uh, we said defense wins football games, and, and this defense sure didn't lose this football game. No, not not any. if anything, the defense really helped make this 21-16 uh, score because, I mean, like Jason Fick had a great fumble recovery down here in the two-yard line. We just couldn't punch it in. And, uh, you know, it, a lot of things probably contribute to it. I think one, you know, they have to look at is the young, inexperienced offensive line. And, I think this is a good experience for them. They'll, they'll come out. They'll fire up. They'll get. They'll be get better over the season. I'm. I thought this. The Beavers looked really good actually so this too. game. And uh, I think so. And the thing you have to remember, this is a non-conference game. Yep. I mean, what coaches and and the whole season is about is your conference schedule. Yep. And so you. That's why you have games like this. It, it tests the waters. It sees how everybody does in game situations. And everybody did excellent. Uh, maybe we just didn't have a couple breaks go our way. Uh, inside the 20-yard line, we had that penalty, which was which was too bad it had to happen. We had the ball on the three-yard line, and we ended up with that five-yard penalty. kind of just took the steam right out of us. Yep. And like you said, the Iowa Conference is the big one. And uh, our next game is going to be an Iowa Conference game. It'll be the Buena Vista Beavers taking on Luther Norrisman right here from J. Leslie Rawlings Stadium. Kickoff, like I said, is 1.30. So come all, all of you come out. I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think Buena Vista is going to be an exciting team to watch this year. A lot of good things are happening. And so uh, to wrap it up, final score here, I guess, is uh, 21 Northwestern, 16 for Buena Vista. Northwestern probably will move up in that, that uh, ranking of theirs. BV starts the season off 0-1. But, hey, we got a game next weekend against uh, William Penn, I believe. And uh, that opens up the conference game. And I think these guys will be fired up, Brent, and I, th I think the season will be pretty good. I think Coach Hadchek will they'll have a good, a good week of practice, and he'll make sure that the team shows up at William Penn. And it's probably, there's a good chance of a win there at William Penn. So for Brent Johnson, I'm Eric Ria. Uh, hope you all see us. I uh, hope you all tune in, I should say. Uh, September 28th, it's Parents Weekend here at BV. The place will be rocking, and uh, hopefully we'll have some good coverage and a good win for Buena Vista, the Buena Vista Beavers. See you all later. Ain't got the good, good thing you ain't, ain't got the good, good thing, thing in your life. Get back, honey. Come on. Ain't, ain't got, got the good thing you ain't got the good thing. Ain't got the good thing, thing, got the good thing in your life. Got it. Hello, my name is Mark McGowan. I'm a member of Tonic Sofa. Hi, I'm Greg Banworth, and uh, I sing second tenor. Hi, I'm Tim Hoback. My name is Sean. I'm with Tonic Sofa. Hi, my name is Justin Lance, and I sing with Tonic Sofa. I sing the high part. Oh, that's the way I like it.
That's right. Cause you ain't got...